The CD that has Amelia's 18th birthday party mix stored in it is played, and the people at her party start to have the best time ever. They all sing the birthday song for her when Amelia walks in, after which everyone starts to drink, since Amelia can finally legally drink now. Everyone tells her that her thrilling life has just begun and she'll have so much fun in the future. But as an adult, her idea of fun has reduced to listening to serene music on her phone. She is 40 now, and doesn't know where her life went since the year she graduated, thinking of all those years that were ahead of her. She complains about this to a customer, who points out that age is just a number. But Amelia still admits that she'd rather her number be 18. She tries on a new dress and shows it to the customer, who loses a chance to wear that dress because Amelia took the last one. The customer reiterates how much she wants the dress and for how long she dreamt about getting it, but Amelia doesn't take it off. Soon after, she is fired by her boss, who manages the store she works at. She doesn't take to this well and acts like she is the one walking out on this job when it's clear that she's being replaced on her birthday. As she walks out of the store, she checks her voicemail, listening to her parents' message wishing her a happy 40th birthday. She walks into a bar in the middle of the day and the bartender, Arez, who also appears to be her friend, pours her a drink. She finishes it in one sip, and he comments that she should pace herself. She convinces him to pour her a second glass, and calls him an angel for agreeing to her wishes. She offers him some of her birthday cake too, but he doesn't want any. Amelia is having her birthday cake alone when a woman walks over to the bar to receive her order of pizzas under the name Fiona. Amelia silently glances over at the woman after hearing the name, and says hi after some contemplation. It seems like the woman, Fiona, is someone she used to know a long time ago. They catch up a little, and Amelia is embarrassed to admit that she still resides in this town in a shabby house. Fiona, on the other hand, feels good to be back here. Amelia is still talking when Fiona points out the cake icing smeared across her lips that Amelia wipes in humiliation. When Arez brings the huge order of pizzas for Fiona, she discloses that these are for her birthday party today. Arez mentions that it's Amelia's birthday today as well, and Fiona remembers, asking if she's having a party tonight too. Amelia lies that she has some people coming over before Fiona leaves. Once she's gone, Arez expresses how much he admires Fiona, as he went to her concert last year. Amelia reminisces that she and Fiona were star friends forever as kids, because their birthday fell on the same day. One year they built a time capsule that they buried near the ski slope on the mountain. They were supposed to open it once they turned 18, but that didn't happen. That was because they didn't remain close, and had different priorities in life. Amelia drunkenly remembers her 18th birthday, when she had a great party. She starts wishing to be 18 again and Arez takes away her drink, instructing her to stop for a while and get some fresh air. Amelia is still drunk, but she decides to go back to the mountain where she hid the time capsule. She counts her steps to find the exact spot on the slope and digs up the time capsule with her hands. She opens the tin box and brings out a piece of paper with her name on it. She flips it open to read what she wrote as a kid. Her wish was to become cool. Next, she pulls out a photograph of herself and Fiona as kids sitting together, arm in arm. She puts it back and takes out Fiona's paper. But before she can read her wish, the paper slips out of Amelia's hand due to the strong breeze and flies away. Amelia runs after it and follows it onto a path, dropping the tin box behind her. The paper falls on a clear path and Amelia bends down to pick it up, only to be hit by a truck seconds later. All she can hear now is people chanting her name as she opens her eyes in her childhood bedroom. Her parents walk into the room holding a cake and singing the birthday song for her, as it's her 18th birthday today. They put a paper crown on her head, as she looks at herself in the mirror and realizes that her wish to go back in time and turn 18 has finally come true. Her parents hand her a birthday card with some cash as a present, while she remains a bit confused. Her father mentions that he has put together a tape of all her birthdays up till now, while she tries to figure out how her room is pink again, as her parents turned it into an office. Her parents call her to breakfast and she manages to get out of bed. It takes one look at her body and clothes to further convince her that she really has time traveled. An MSN chat notification beeps on her computer, and she gets a hit of nostalgia. It's a message from Moa, congratulating her for turning 18. Amelia also checks the calendar to see that the date is the 10th of June 2002. She inspects the Y2K paraphernalia around her room to relive her teenage years when her dad calls out for her. She sits down at the breakfast table, feeling all warm and fuzzy, and pinches herself to ensure that she's not dreaming. She remarks on how young her parents look, but they take it as a tactic to get money out of them. Amelia's parents tell her to finish breakfast quickly, because she can't miss school even on her birthday. Amelia is going through her teenage wardrobe when she overhears her friend Moa coming over, waiting downstairs for her so that they can go to school together. Moa hugs Amelia as soon as she sees her, but expresses disapproval of her outfit instantly, because Amelia is wearing loose sweats like a middle-aged woman. 
Moa adds that Max won't like this outfit, before Amelia changes into a more appropriate outfit for a popular 18-year-old. She looks a bit uncomfortable, but Moa assures her that she looks good before giving her the birthday present she picked out for her. Amelia can already recall that she got her a rose flask, and Moa doubts that Max gave away her surprise. Moa assumes that Amelia has deja vu, and goes on about how she can party in style tonight with her new flask. They're walking to school together when Amelia stops outside the store where she worked as an adult. Moa pushes her to keep walking, while going on about how her birthday party is going to be the party of the year, as everyone's coming. Amelia makes Moa stop, and asks her upfront if there's anything different about her, like whether she looks older. But it turns out that it's only Amelia who can see her adult face. Everyone else sees her teenage face, and this confuses Amelia even more. Amelia guesses that she might be in a coma after the accident, and this is her life flashing before her demise. After making sure that she's not drunk, Moa gives her some gum and ends up agreeing that she does sound more grown up. When they get to school, Max hops out of his convertible and walks over to Amelia, who finds him just as hot as she did many years ago. They kiss, after which she walks the hallways of her school with her best friend and boyfriend, being greeted and wished by everyone because she's very popular. She's still taking everything and when Moa drags her to the auditorium where a talent show is going on. A trio of girls are performing the catch-up song on stage, while Moa shows Amelia and Max the fake ID she got for herself. They laugh at the name she picked out for herself, as the card says Paris Hilton. A teacher announces another performance on the stage, as a student from the drama class is about to sing. It's none other than Fiona, who is treated cruelly by the high school audience. Most of the students get up to leave even before Fiona can start her song, including Moa, Max, and Amelia. Fiona continues to sing awkwardly while Amelia hangs back, smiling, because she knows how successful Fiona will be one day. Fiona ends her performance midway, because the auditorium is almost empty now. The teacher returns to the stage, requesting everyone to stay and listen, as Fiona practiced a lot for this. No one listens to him and carries on with their day. Amelia struggles with remembering her locker combination before she starts her presentation with Moa on Hinduism. She shows no interest in delivering the presentation, because she knows her grades won't help her at all in the future. The Hindu concept of reincarnation and second chances makes her believe that this is what's happening to her as well. She accepts that she's reliving the best time of her life as they drive around town in Max's convertible. They stop at a liquor store, and Amelia knows exactly what she wants. Moa goes into the store to test her fake ID and treat her best friend to a drink on her birthday. Max and Amelia snicker because they know that she'll fail. They draw in closer together to kiss each other, but are interrupted by Moa, whose ID turns out to be useless. Max suggests getting moonshine from somewhere, but Amelia forbids it, because it would lead to Moa blacking out and needing her stomach pumped. Moa disagrees, but Amelia knows her and elaborates that moonshine has methanol that can make them go blind or drunk way too fast. Amelia doesn't want the party cancelled either, so she goes to the bar she drinks at as an adult and steals some booze from there. She spends that afternoon trying out outfits for her birthday party, and finally walks into the party, where she's celebrated by everyone at her school. Moa hugs her, and she cries tears of joy, after which Max hugs her too. They start to drink and Amelia uses her rose flask, laughing at Moa's jokes. She compliments how funny she is, and promises to keep in touch this time. Someone throws up and their conversation is interrupted. Amelia glances over at Fiona, who is standing in a corner at the party, not knowing what to do with herself. She redirects her attention to Max and his friends, who are obsessing over a new phone. They argue with her about what phones will be like in the future and she gets up and walks away, tired of their mansplaining. No one understands the term yet, but she doesn't care and says hi to Fiona, wishing her a happy birthday too. She didn't think that Fiona would be here, but learns that it was her friend's idea to come. She compliments her performance this morning, but Fiona doesn't take it seriously. Max finds Amelia and kisses her in front of Fiona, which makes her more uncomfortable. He takes Amelia away from Fiona, to protect her from committing social s by talking to such an outcast. Fiona knows that they're talking about her, but Amelia is more interested in finding a spot to make out with Max. They find a room and get intimate there, and Max is still in awe of how Amelia showed such expertise. Amelia, on the other hand, states that life won't get better than this moment. She plans to make the most of every moment, and live life to the fullest this time. She brings up the prospect of them having a future together, and this freaks him out because he thinks they're too young to be talking about a house or kids. He leaves the bed because he wants to get some air, and she quickly tries to get dressed to follow him. He breaks up with her, despite her efforts to make him stay. And this throws her off, because this wasn't supposed to happen until a few months later. Moa finds Amelia and takes her to the spot where her crush foreman Patrick is sitting. She chickens out of making a move on him, and Amelia stays too upset to give her any reaction. Amelia drinks tons of booze and spends the night dancing until she passes out. But the next morning doesn't bring a new day. Instead, she wakes up on her 18th birthday again, being greeted by her parents who are singing the song to her. 
She reminds them that they're already done all of this, but figures out soon after that she's getting another shot at this day. She takes control this time, to make sure that this will be her best birthday ever. She enjoys every moment, and avoids all the faults that could come up throughout the day, until the moment she runs into Fiona at the party. This time, she gets straight to the point and reveals to her that she uncovered their old time capsule. This comes as a surprise to Fiona, who immediately inquires if Amelia read her note. She clarifies that she didn't get to read Fiona's note, but her wish came true, so she wonders if the same happened to Fiona as well. She's still speaking when Max takes her away, and they start dancing. Amelia gets handsy with him while dancing, and this makes him unsettled as he doesn't like PDA. She instructs her to tone it down a bit, and she apologizes before drinking some more. He's trying to get her glass away when she spills the drink on him, and he lashes out at her in front of everyone. He goes home to change, but she has a feeling that he won't be coming back. She crushes the glass in her hand before she's brought to Foreman Patrick. This time, she encourages Moa to shoot her shot, or else she'll wake up old and lonely one day, regretting her choices. Moa requests her to test the waters first so she approaches Patrick. He can't hear her over the loud music, so she takes him aside to talk. Amelia explains that her friend has a crush on him, and she thinks that they'd make a cute couple together. She continues to say that her friend is too shy when he leans in to kiss her out of nowhere. She makes him stop, and emphasizes that it was Moa she was talking about, not herself. This brings a disappointed look to Patrick's face, and he says that everyone in this town, including him, is into Amelia. She commands him to repeat that statement, and this catches her interest. She moves forward, and they start to kiss until she realizes that Moa has been silently watching them. She runs after her heartbroken, betrayed friend to explain herself. That's when Max also returns wearing a new shirt. Amelia admits that Patrick kissed her only for a second, but that's enough for both Moa and Max to cut off ties with her and leave the party. The day restarts for a third time, but she stays back for Fiona's performance this time. She trips on a wire and falls when Fiona gets off the stage. Her nose starts to bleed, so Fiona hands her a tissue and questions whether she should call the school nurse. Fiona wants to leave because she has class soon, but Amelia insists that she stay, because only she can solve her problem. She elaborates that she's stuck in some sort of a time loop, and that has something to do with their time capsule. She shares that she doesn't know how to move on from this day. Moa finds Amelia, calling her for their presentation, which gives Fiona enough time to go off somewhere. At the party, she continues her conversation with Fiona, curious to know what happens to the character in the film that she was talking about. Fiona answers that the loop doesn't break in the end, which thankfully is just a joke. Amelia finds out the timings of when Fiona's mom closes her video store tonight. Then she blows off Moa and Max to go to the video store, but finds it closed. She keeps waiting by the door until late at night. Amelia wants to know if Fiona can rent her the movie, because she needs to watch it as soon as possible. They go inside the store, and Fiona mentions that there are other movies about time travel too, when her mom sees Amelia back in the store after ages. Fiona's mom invites her to watch the movie in the store with Fiona, and have as much candy as they want. Fiona's mom brings them some bean bags before going to bed. They get their hands on some salty licorice and laugh over a childhood memory. Once they're settled and cozy, while watching the movie together, a romantic scene comes up where the character appreciates having something different while he's stuck in a time loop. It turns out that's what it took for him to break the time loop, and this stirs up some unresolved feelings for Amelia. She turns the TV off, and guesses that she has to become a better person to break out of her time loop. She gets clarity about how bad of a friend she's been to Moa, and even Fiona, as she forced her to spend time with her today. She decides that she should finally give Fiona some space, failing to see how her face dimmed down at this. Amelia promises to do things right this time, and thanks her for watching the movie with her before leaving. The next day, Amelia remains very friendly with Moa, and completely aces their presentation on Hinduism. Then she sets up Moa with Patrick at her party, but that still doesn't solve her problem as the time loop continues. She completely breaks down this time and loses all hope. So she ends up rebelling and showing up to school. She also tries getting hit by a truck on purpose and getting arrested for vandalizing her school, but all in vain. She goes to her school counselor, because she feels like she's suffering from psychosis, because the same day just keeps on repeating itself. The school counselor responds that it's a feeling that grows stronger the older you get. Then, the school counselor gets distracted and loses her train of thought, considering the small variations that can make her mundane life more interesting. Amelia leaves, knowing that this meeting was a truck too. Amelia tells everyone's fortune at the party, and hugs a peer she knows will pass away in a few years. She notices Fiona laughing among her friends from the drama club, and goes to the kitchen, where she overhears Moa and Max talking about how she's always needy of attention. Moa even goes as far as saying that she was ugly in middle school, and only got to hang out with good-looking people once she turned pretty in high school. Amelia doesn't even show them any anger, because she knows that they're not meant to be in her life under any circumstances. But she agrees with the fact that she's lost, and later runs into Fiona, 
who is about to leave the party. Amelia asks if she wants to hang out and watch a movie together, which comes as a shock to Fiona. Amelia understands her skepticism and confides in her about how sometimes it feels impossible to talk to anyone but her. Fiona reminds her that they haven't talked in years, but Amelia stays persistent in wanting to be friends with her. Fiona admits that it's a bit strange because she ignored her throughout high school, and this sudden change in her attitude is uncalled for. Amelia argues that they drifted apart, but Fiona spells out she lost interest in her, and that led to her spending freshman year alone until she made some new friends. Fiona claims that Amelia is too self-centered to care about anyone else, and refuses to start over with her. Amelia returns home early that night, lying to her parents that her party was cancelled. She sits down to watch TV and seek comfort from them. They comfort her that she's self-focused rather than being self-centered, but she knows deep down that Fiona was right and justified in her accusation. Amelia goes to bed, where she finds the tape her dad made of all her previous birthdays. Watching it makes her tear up, and she gets to the part where she and Fiona write their secret wishes for their time capsule. The next day, she takes over the stage and makes everyone sit in the auditorium and show respect to Fiona. She makes Fiona complete her song and cries during it, while everyone applauds Fiona's singing. She doesn't waste any time at the party and goes up to Fiona to inform her that she's digging up their time capsule today. Fiona turns down her invitation to join her in this and walks away. Nevertheless, Amelia retrieves the tin box and crumples up the paper with her wish on it in an unimpressed manner. She is about to read Fiona's wish when she shows up unexpectedly and tries to snatch the paper away from her. Amelia laughs teasingly, but reading Fiona's wish makes her smile fade away. Fiona's wish was for Amelia to fall in love with her, which is why she runs away from there in embarrassment. Amelia chases her onto a street, where she gets hit by a truck. This brings her back to the present, where she wakes up on the mountain as an adult. Some people help her up, and it turns out that Max was driving the truck that ran her over. She asks for a favor from him, and directs him to drive her to Fiona as an apology for almost butchering her. On their way to Fiona's house, Amelia catches Max up on how she was too selfish to notice her best friend's feelings. He promises her that everything is going to be alright as he drops her off at Fiona's place. Amelia watches Fiona from afar at her birthday party, and discovers that she has a loving partner and a child of her own now. Amelia runs away as soon as Fiona makes eye contact with her. Amelia's boss takes her in after finding her in such a distraught state. She listens to Amelia's complete story, and how she doesn't want to disrupt Fiona's life now, because it's too late. Her boss rehires and comforts her, because everyone is allowed to flip out on their birthday. Amelia goes to her parents' house to celebrate her 40th birthday with them, and they shower her with love as always. Amelia ends the day at the mountain, where she meets Fiona, who brings up how she was seeing her cousin and her baby when she ran away from her party. This is a relief for Amelia, who apologizes for every time she wronged her. They end up together as Amelia's parents sing the birthday song for them on video call. 